along and ride this train. Come along and ride this train. Across the mountains, prairies, reservations, rivers, levees, plains. Come along and ride this train. Ride this train. Ride this train with me to the great timber forest of America. See that square, full-shouldered fellow over there with the checkered Mackinac? He's a logger. He may be a faller in the lumber state of Maine, a high climber up in Michigan, or a sawyer out in Washington. But by the muscles in his arms and the weathered look on his face, there's no mistaking it. He's a lumberjack. You're not born with arms like that, mister. To get those, you gotta bring down a whole lot of timber. I lived on a farm out in Iowa. I pulled the corn and I worked in the hay. I got trapped by a girl, but a wiggle free. I heard the organ timber calling me. Won't you tell me something, Mr. Lumberjack? Is it one for forward and three for back? Is it two for stop and four for go? He said, boy, ask a whistle punk. I don't know. Well, I learned this fact from a logger named Ray. You don't cut timber on a windy day. Stay out of the woods when the moisture's low. Or you ain't gonna live to collect your dough. Won't you tell me something, Mr. Lumberjack? Is it one for forward and three for back? Is it two for stop and four for go? He said, boy, ask a whistle punk. I don't know. <clears throat> Thank you. In this day and age, a lot of jobs have been taken over by machines. But there's still a few places where a man's muscle is much more important than steam and gasoline. Just look up a timber crew and you'll find that there's plenty of work left for men who aren't afraid to sweat. Life in a logging camp's no place for the fellow that's looking for easy living. A lot of board feet has got to be cut before you draw your pay. And a lot of logs have got to be snaked and loaded before you can go into town on Saturday night. And whether you're pulling that cross-cut saw or swinging a double bit axe, if you're going to make it as a lumberjack, you'll find that a man's got to be a lot tougher than that timber he's cutting. Well, my world is green and darkened down. My home is in the logging camp. All week I cut down the mighty trees. Saturday I do as the damn well please. Give the man more than his hire, and he'll never know it if I tire. Show me the toughest tree around, and the timber man will bring it down. Swing it hard, cut it clean, no halfway or in between. Move when the axe is in my hand, make way for the timber man. Well, they say that there's sawdust in my brain, and don't get caught out in the rain. I've got stuff water in my blood, the sweat from my brow turns the ground to mud. When the men don't know how to fell the tree, the one they'll come and ask is me. I mark my spot and I take my stand, and the tree's gonna fall for the timber man. Swing it hard, cut it clean, go halfway or in between. Move when the axe is in my hand, make way for the timber man. Make way for the timber man. You know, it takes a rugged man to be a logger and a lot of man to do a logger's work. But though he may work hard, play hard, and live hard, I've seen the roughest, toughest looking lumberjack that you can imagine reach down off the ground and pick up a baby bird 
that had fallen out of its nest and gently place it back in its nest. Over the years, a lot of stories have been told about the life of these hardy men. And some of the tales told about them are just about as tall as the timber that they cut. <laughs> now, let's face it, lumberjack. Paul Bunyan, take him, for instance. They say he invented a cross-cut saw that would mow down a whole forest in a single day. Or how about his friend, Broad Axe Bill? They say it could kick knots off a yellow pine with his bare feet. Pretty tall tales, fellow. Well, he rode through town on a big blue ox. He had fists as hard as cement blocks. 500 pounds and nine feet tall. That's Paul. Talk about chopping when he swings his ax. You could hear it ringing for a mile and a half. And he'd yell timber, and down she'd fall. That's Paul. Hey, talk about drinking. That man so mean, he'd never drink nothing but kerosene and a five-gallon can's a little bit small. Said Paul, was a hundred years old when he said with a sigh, I think I'm gonna lay right down and die. Been chopping and sweating and I'm tired of it all. Said Paul, so he died and we cried. It took 18 men just to chop the ground and 24 more just to lower him down. We covered him up and figured that was all. Poor Paul, but late one night, the trees started shaking, the sky started rumbling and the earth started quaking. And out of the ground with a high y'all, come Paul, he shook the earth off from his clothes. He scratched where it is and he wiped his nose. You know, being dead ain't no fun at all, says Paul. Up in heaven, they got harps on their knees. They got clouds and wings, but they got no trees. I don't think that's my kind of heaven at all, says Paul. Yes, sir, there might have been some mighty big stories told about the lumberjack. But the importance of your work, Mr. Logger, speaks for itself. And... You work in the woods from morning to night. You laugh and sing and you cuss and fight. Saturday night you go to Eugene. And on a Sunday morning your pockets are clean. Won't you tell me something, Mr. Lumberjack? Is it one for forward and three for back? Is it two for stop and four for go? He said, boy, ask a whistle punk. I don't know. Take it easy, Lumberjack.